the foundation has been truly blessed to be able to have a golf tournament of this capacity just around us. Because to have that stability, we have raised millions of dollars for education just through this event alone. And so many other organizations just are not as fortunate to have the stability of something like this because it's really empowered us to be able to do lots of other things because of it. And so one thing leads to another. And I think for the community, it's important to know who the Manatee Education Foundation is. Our mission is to support innovative programming that state dollars cannot pay for. So we're there to help with the scholarship resources, to let people know where the scholarships are in the community. But not only that, we have taken on a huge program over the last few years called Soarin' Four. And with that program, we, we've, it's on steroids right now with the CARES Act funding. It's so phenomenal. We've been able to do a drive-through supplies at every Title I school. So, I mean, and that's 15 of them, and we've got to do them all before the end of November. So, I've got a good team and a good crew that do this every year. I like to call out Susan DeWitt, Alicia Watterson. We have Kathy Galea with Bill. She, every year, has helped us. So, you know, we can't do this alone. I mean, Bill is actually our rock and helps us to access and reach a lot of the people we would have never reached. But it's those people that have been with us every year that know exactly, it's like turnkey now, that it's been 24 years that we've been doing it. I, and I have to say that every year it just gets better and better. And this year we are just so excited to be out here in the fall, a little cooler weather and having just a beautiful day with all of the wonderful sponsors, as you can see some of them behind me. But more importantly, just all the great people that have been here every year, year in, year out. Dean Cannon being a signature sponsor, and all the Eagle sponsors that are involved, and Birdies. So, you know, it's really a privilege to be able to host this, along with the Phil Galvano family. We have his mother here, Bill's mom is here, all the kids, and of course, Without, what would we do without Bill Galvano? Past, uh, just still president of the Senate, and we are excited to be here with him. And the close relationship that we've had with him for so many years is just uh, one that's for the books. In the 14 years that I've been doing this, I have seen a great contribution by so many people. And we are so grateful to be able to just not only work with the kind of people that we're working with, but also just to be able to help the kind of people that we've been able to help. It's really a true blessing. I, I was telling Nick Boliteri today, you know, to have the star power of somebody like him, plus all the major senators throughout the state, all the, you know, the lawmakers, the people that make the big decisions are here today. We have like Education Commissioner Richard Corcoran. We have the governor coming out tomorrow. Last year the governor was here both days. Who would ever get that kind of star power at a golf event, you know, for education? And that's the key thing here, education. And that's why I think people are so big on supporting this, is that they're here to support the uh, teachers, the students of Manatee County School District, because we do teacher grants, we do programs for grade level reading. We are just, and, and in this year, it's been a little bit more difficult, but actually we are blessed to be able to host this at this time. We have really turned things around in the last five years with working closely with all of our partners, like Unidos Now, the Manatee Community Foundation, with Reach Manatee, we, we're doing a collective with that. And we just, I feel that that's how we're all gaining momentum, by working together and not separately in silos. And the Manatee Education Foundation, people could help us by donating to mefinfo.org. Go to our website, you'll see there's many things on there. We have a COVID relief fund, we have the um, teacher grants, and we have donations just in general that you can give to to help with the teachers and the students of Manatee County School District. Well, I also want to especially thank you, Charles, METV, and the team that's always there whenever we need anything and have been there throughout the years. And you're here with us every year. And, you know, those kind of partners are what make us better. And I'm just thrilled that we could all be together today. Well, it's important on so many levels. Uh, from a personal perspective, it, 
uh, memorializes my late father, who now we're in the 24th annual. So it's been 24 years. And I have to say, this is a, a, a special nostalgic year because the original Phil Galvano classic was started by my brother Peter, who we lost about a year ago. And so it has additional meaning and it's a special time. But it's important for the kids of Manatee County too, for our students. The money that has come from this tournament over the past almost quarter decade has really changed the experience that they've had in our public school system K through 12. And that is important to me, it's important to my entire family, it's important to everybody who you see out here. And we still have people who come from all over the country to be at this event on this day. And we're, it's October this year. Generally this tournament takes place in May, but we've been dealing with a pandemic, a lot of uncertainty, and so we had to delay it. But fortunately we were able to come together safely and we're raising money doing the things that so many people have counted on for many, many years, and we will continue to do that. And so I'm so grateful that uh, we have the support that we have, and I will continue to do this as, as until I can't anymore. I, I'm always so excited about the people that we bring to the tournament, and Governor DeSantis uh, is part of the tournament this year. But I'm especially excited to have my friend Nick Walinda here, who needs no introduction. He's known around the world. and. Uh, I don't know if his golf is as good as his tightrope <laughs> walking, but uh, I know he has the mental ability to play golf. So thank you so much Absolutely. for being here. Thank you for having me. It's always an honor to be part of such a great cause, really investing into our next generation. And uh, I will always support great causes like this. Well, well let me tell you, I've, I've read his last book, and he taught me a lot just in those pages. <laughs> and being a senator, he's walking the wire every day. So. Yeah, that's so. METV has been with us for 24 years. METV has put the word out for us for over two and a half decades, close to two and a half decades. And without you all, I don't think we'd be at the level we are today. So thank you, METV, and thank you, Mary Glass. And thank you very much. Our staff and our, uh, our team here just look forward to this every, every year. The last four years, uh, going on our fourth year now, we're so, we're so excited to uh, help uh, with the Education Foundation and uh, our team is just ready to serve everybody and have a great, great weekend. Our company, Ocean Properties, and our ownership are very, um, they're very involved in the community. Anywhere we go, uh, we're, we're all about children first and foremost and then any other organization that's worthy, we're, we're, we want to give back to the community. We want to stay engaged with everybody. And uh, uh, I think um, uh, this year will be a, a great year in 21. We'll go back to some sort of normalcy, getting back into, uh, back into supporting some of these events and keeping it safe, obviously, is one of our main goals. Well, I want them to, first of all, when they get here, get a warm welcome, but also to feel safe, that they're at an event where we're all practicing social distancing, wearing our masks, sanitizing. Um, we, we want everybody to be safe. We're, we're even doing temperature checks here when they check in. So when they, when they come here and they stay throughout the weekend and they leave, that they felt that we provided a, not only a, a fun, great environment, but a safe environment. Our resort is, uh, I, people really don't realize how big it really is. Uh, it's almost 500, over 500 acres uh, of, of resort, including, uh, uh, our three golf courses, um, and one of them we're playing on today, which is our island side course. We have uh, 21 tennis courts. Uh, they're all clay courts, uh, top line, uh, competitive courts. We have a 291 rooms, uh, a 290 slip marina, and uh, unbelievable boats. We have. Uh, it's it's just a, the resort. It brings it all together with our new renovated rooms and our new. Uh, um, hospitality uh, clubhouse restaurants we have over seven restaurants here so uh, it's a, it's its own little entity and you don't have to leave you don't you just come here and you you could do anything you want you have a great beach the, the beach is phenomenal here and it's uh, the food the poolside 
um, our bars, our restaurants, they're just incredible. I think we have the best team in the, in the world. Uh, every day they come to work with a smile. They're proud to be here. Look at this beautiful club that they have to work at. Um, the members that, that, that are members here are incredible to them. Um, they enjoy being in an atmosphere where everybody's upbeat and have fun, work hard, and uh, they're, they're happy to be here. And, and we're, um, we're glad to have them. And it's one of the most important parts of our club is our staff. Well, we have, a, we have a website called Opal Collection. They can go right onto that site and, and, and select it, or they can go direct to longboatkeyclub.com and, and pull up our resort. Um, our resort has, um, it's an incredible, it's over 225 suites. Uh, there are one, two, and three bedrooms. Uh, brand new, renovated uh, over the years. And our, like I said, our, you, have to, you have to come and see uh, the golfing, the tennis, everything that outdoor activities. There's nothing here that you can't do almost. It's going to be a beautiful day, beautiful people, and a beautiful event. So uh, everybody's going to enjoy it. The weather's going to be great. Can't beat that. I've been coming here because I believe in functions like this, where you're helping education, helping children, because that's what the world needs today. And I'm a good friend of Senator Galvano. Children of today needs education and a place where they can perform their dreams. And that is so important because if you don't help children today, I'm doing the voluntary tennis and learning program and we just got a nice endowment and I tell you why we do it. Because I have two adopted sons from Ethiopia, we're giving them an opportunity and if you don't give children an opportunity to pursue their dreams, they'll be on the street. And my compliments to Senator Galvano, who's a great friend of mine, who's made this a big success. I want to be remembered for what I've done for people, not the 10 number ones, being voted number one coach of the world. I want to be remembered for making an impact on people's lives. And that goes on for generations. Well, Judge and I and Steve Johnson have been friends for many, many years, and Mark, he's a character. But I tell you, uh, I have a new book coming out with uh, the Tennis Channel, and it's called Shoot first, talk later. And uh, doing it with my friend, the CEO of the Tennis Channel, Ken Solomon. It'll be a terrific opportunity for people to read about the impact that I made on people's lives. Life is not only roses and lilacs. It's telling the truth, getting down in the trenches. And that's what it was all about. And uh, I'm doing a new lecture with a big group in Miami. I sold 21 videos and they're gonna be sold to people. One of the videos, pushy parents versus supportive parents. Many years ago, I grew up in the Italian black neighborhood. And my grandmother was the boss. When I came home for grammar school, grandma would say, Sonny Vanekwa, give grandma, yes, grandma. You good boy, yes, Grandma. You do everything teachers say to do, yes. Go out and play. You coaches, you parents, you head of organizations, shame on you. Did you get the deal? Did you win? Remember the greatest coach in NFL history, my friends, Vince Lombardi said, my teams never lost, we just ran out of time. And remember something. Even though the scoreboard says who wins by numbers, if you did everything that you can do and a little bit more, you can play on my team. God bless you, everybody.
Well, you know, there there is no greater cause to get behind than the education of our children, right? Supporting the Manatee Education Foundation in turn supports many of the special programs in our schools from field trips to early learning that is so critical at this juncture we know. So when you see this camaraderie, it's really all about folks getting behind local education. It does. It's really an opportunity for Manatee to shine as a whole. We have folks from around the state who come for this event, and they leave so impressed with our local leadership, with our local education le leadership, and uh, and it really is a chance for us to be in the spotlight here. It's We are so blessed that the Galvano family have chosen this foundation to support and have stand, stood by the foundation for these many, many years. It's important to the family. It's important to the community. It's really a legacy for generations to come. Well, in terms of Manatee, like several of the counties in Central and Southwest Florida, we live and work here, right? Our employees call this home. This is where their children play t-ball. This is where they shop for their groceries. So this is our home and we contribute to our home. We count this amongst our blessings. And it's crucial to support your home front, right? To have the good schools, to have the good environmental initiatives, to make sure that you, you know, your children don't go hungry. All those things are, are at the top of our list as for so many people. And it's really a pleasure that, that we get to share our resources with the place that we call home. I would say it's a great way to give back and it's an easy way to give back. You don't have to show up here and be a golfer and, and you don't necessarily need to come to the Arts Alive event, but you can certainly make a donation. And you can, if you're a teacher out there, a lot of our newer teachers don't know that they can give directly through the payroll con contribution program. And so for those newer teachers out there, those school staff just joining the school district, please just a little goes a long way for our kids. It's important for me because I didn't get an education, really. I was just a tennis player. I went to school till eighth grade, and then I came to the Nick Boletari Tennis Academy. And by the way, IMG Academy now has a great school. But when I was a kid, not quite so much. So we got out of school at noon, and I really put all my eggs in the turn pro and tennis basket. Luckily, shockingly, I was able to make it and it turned out okay for me. But I think in general that's not the way to go. You always have to rely on your education and what you know as far as getting through life. And so I'm always going to support anything in that realm. Well, I, I sort of, I mean, if we want to go all the way back, I sort of, my father sort of changed the way tennis is played in a lot of ways, the way it was taught. My dad didn't know anything about tennis, but he was an electrical engineer that designed nuclear power plants, so he was a mathematician, really, and he saw me take a lesson when I was seven years old. He was from Spain, so he had an accent, and the way you played back then is you took the racket straight back, turn sideways, racket straight back, point the follow through at your finish, and come off the court, and I said, Dad, what'd you think? And he said, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard in my life. How can you swing full speed and stop? That means you're slowing down. So he sort of devised a forehand where there's momentum the whole time and I'm letting the racket go and I'm hitting it as hard as I can. And most people looked at me and thought, they'd say two things, your arm's gonna fall off. And the other one was, you'll never swing that hard under pressure. When you're nervous, you're never gonna be able to swing that fast. The difference from Nick was, Boletari was that he saw it and said, that's the Boletari forehand, and he started teaching the Boletari, the Arias forehand, and it all, you know, he's in the Hall of Fame and whatever. Um, that's how that rolled. So because I had sort of a new game, it was easy for me even to overpower bigger, stronger men in the pros when I first started. So I turned pro at 16. I wouldn't have turned pro if it wasn't for Nick. That was another. In those days, everybody went to college at least one year. So John McEnroe made semis of Wimbledon and went to Stanford for one year. I didn't understand the, the genius to one year of college. I'm not sure what, where, that, where that gets you. So Nick said, I beat somebody pretty good when I was 15 or 16. And Nick said, that's it, you're turning pro. And you know, it worked out. Well, my dad always says I peaked at 12. Um, so I was very good, very good at 12. Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess the highlights were I won the French Open mixed doubles when I was 16 with another 16-year-old. I remember thinking at the time, I'm supposed to be excited about this, but I'm going to win about 10 of these in singles, 
So why do I really care? I ended up winning zero of them in singles. I made semis of the U.S. Open. I won a, you know, I did okay. I didn't do quite as well. I got to five in the world, um, you know, but I was expecting number one when I was eight years old and sort of, uh, so five was disappointing in some ways. Um, it's a good fit because I really did want to give back and I feel as though what's happened over the last 30 years in tennis and maybe even in everyday life in some ways is people have become afraid to compete and people are so focused in tennis at least I don't want to say in every realm but in tennis at least People are so focused on themselves. Tennis academies and coaches have had them thinking about their strokes and working on their strokes and their technique and making sure everything's perfect. They're so focused on themselves that they've forgotten how to beat the guy on the other side of the net. And that's really, in the end of the day, all you're trying to do with your technique and everything else is figure out how to, to beat the guy you're playing against. So I've sort of tried to bring back to the academy. When I grew up there, Basically, all Nick did was bring the best kids in, in the nation together, and we competed against each other, and everybody wanted to be the top dog. And so we sort of sharpened each other. And my group was pretty good. I had four or five of us out of the 15 or 20 that were there at the start that got to top 50 in the world. That next group was even better. That was Andre Agassi, who got to number one in the world, Jim Currier, who got to number one in the world, David Wheaton, who got to nine. They had five or six and they really did those guys really did push each other on to to greater and greater heights so i'm sort of trying to bring that feeling of competing back to the academy learning how to compete and while doing that i really get to work on the kids character because kids are are struggling to compete nowadays and i i still remember one of my favorite moments at the academy for me as a director was last year there was a girl who wanted to get to one of the top either UCLA or USC tennis schools. Um, her, her ranking, her UTR was just, a, it was close, but it was a little bit low. And every match she played, your UTR, that's an algorithm that tennis now uses to rate you. That UTR is affected by every match you play. And she's crying after losing a match because she lost a match that it's gonna go down a little bit further. And we had this long talk and I, I told her two things. I said, number one, you're always focused on the negative. So you're thinking, if I lose, my UTR is gonna go down to this number. I want you just the opposite. If when I win, my UTR is gonna go here. I wanna change your mindset from fear to, to where I'm headed. And the other thing I want you to fake a little bit of when you hit a good shot, I know you're not feeling it right now because you can see her body language. I want you to give me a fist pump. I want you to say, yes, come on, let's go. I want only positive. Anything out of your mouth is going to be positive. She played a match the next day. She won. I didn't see the match, but I'm walking through the grounds, and she stops me and goes, Jimmy, it works. <laughs> and that was a great feeling for me because that's sort of what I'm, what I'm trying to bring. I mean, I guess what I would say is... I, tennis is the best sport that there is as far as building character. So just the fact that you want to be good in this sport that takes a lot of time to create and develop the skill to become a good tennis player, that in itself builds character. And then learning how to compete as well builds character. I feel as though you need to dream pretty big. That's what they need to do. If they want to be a great player, you have to actually think you're going to be a great player, expect to be a great player. As I told you, I thought I was going to be number one in the world. And I was actually sure I was going to make it. That's the, that's the crazy thing. I know it's when you're eight years old, you have those sort of thoughts, but that's what allowed me to get to five. I was never surprised when I had good results. Actually, I, I appreciate Bob Ferentz, and he was one of the better male players when I came here as a 13 year old. So I needed not just juniors to hit with, I needed some men to play with as well. And he was, I always appreciated anyone. If you'd seen me when I was 13, people tell me I was really cocky. I, I can't believe that, I don't think that's true. But, but that's what they say. Um, and I was very small, but because as I told you, I sort of had a different stroke. I was fairly powerful in, in comparison to everyone I was playing against. And so any adult that didn't mind playing against me and possibly, probably losing, um, I appreciate. And Bob Ferris was one of those guys. And, you know, so he's a great man in my books.
obviously the big the big factor is, is uh, Bill Galvano, and it, and it really shows the respect that he has, really in memory of his father Phil, who I knew thirty something years ago when he was developing Timber Creek condominiums on Cortez Road and giving golf lessons to make ends meet. And Bill was maybe ten or twelve years old at the time, and uh, you know I think it's just a a great cause for the. <coughs> the you know, for the for the education, for the school board. I mean, it, you know, our, our 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 future lies with our kids, and anything we can do to help raise some money to then provide supplies into the school system, and this is a great venue to do it at. And so, you know, how could you not want to participate in this thing? I've known him since he began his career in, in uh, law practice. This has always been his goal to help Manti County get into politics and do it that way. He probably wouldn't admit it, but at some point, we all believe that he will be governor. But his legacy with regard to this, regardless of whether or not he's still in politics actively in the next year or two, uh, will will carry on. I just We were just speaking with a former representative who said that when he got involved with this charity tournament, the fact, as, as Steve was saying, um, the memory of his father, education, giving back to the community, he'll continue to do that. He's not going to get out of that. He'll continue to be a, an active member of our legal community and the community as a whole. So I don't see that as an issue at all, and I do think that Jim Boyd will also be incredibly active in our community. And so it's it's developed a legacy that, that is going to carry on um, for, years to for years to come. And, you know, when you think about it, there's probably 50 to 60 charity tournaments in the Manatee County or at least Sarasota um Bay Area, and of course most of them were hit by this pandemic, but this is something that people feel very, very strongly about and, and participate in and support every year. I mean, who wouldn't <laughs> want to support the Education <laughs> Foundation, whether it's Manatee County or any other place? Again, I go back to the fact that, you know, kids are our future, you know, they, they, the teachers struggle trying to find money for pe pens and paper, and here's a way to... Um, you know, raise a lot of money and provide them with some resources that they can't get through their tax dollars into the school system. Um, obviously right now what we're going through with regard to determining if it's going to be in, in school learning, in house learning, uh, hybrid uh, teaching and that, we all know, we are learning, we are probably seeing more now the importance of education and the importance of the social functioning of, of children as they develop. And, and being involved with schools and, and to have something like this that raises money for a true worthy cause, paying for pens and papers, not, you know, making sure that we have good, good teachers and, and the education and the development of our children. I think we now appreciate it more than we ever have um, because of what's happened. So this is just more important than ever. And it is, as, as Steve said, it's, it's our future. <laughs>